Today, as promised, what we are going to cover is how to make your own foam clay for cosplay. Welcome back to BS with Ben, where you get to BS like the best of them. Today, what I need you to do is, if this is of any use to you whatsoever, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment and tell me how upset you are and how wrong I am, or share this with your friends. Any of those three options are huge for me. Stick around to the very end of this video. There are two things that can happen while you're making the slime that will make your life a little bit of a nightmare. There are solutions to these, but you don't get them unless you stick around to the very end. Eh? Eh? Is this a foam clay replacement? Just like anything else in the world, this is a foam clay alternative. It is something that you can use instead of, is it better? Probably not. Will it be the most amazing thing on the planet? Probably not. Is this something that you can use and experiment with and maybe come up with some great uses? Absolutely. So the whole point of this is to make sure that you guys understand this isn't a foam clay replacement, this is a foam clay alternative. It will let you mold things, it will give you a tougher finish, and it weighs a little bit more, but it's something I like using. So what's the secret? It really isn't much of a secret. My daughter and I, the other day, were making slime, as a dad and daughter normally do, and I realized that some of the properties of the slime that we had made was almost exactly the same as the properties of the foam clay. This is one of the things that I noticed about the um, the slime that we're making is, is that you can stretch slime, but if you give slime a really quick jolt, you end up breaking it. And that is a sign of a non-Newtonian fluid. Let's just grab this little bit of foam clay here. And we're gonna take that and you notice that we can stretch it just like we're doing other stuff, but when we do a quick pull, we get a break just like that stuff. So again, the only thing that I was thinking of with this foam clay was, it's the same stuff as slime, it's just got something to keep it from settling. So what are we going to need for this foam clay or cosplay? Cos... So what are we gonna need for this cos clay? Pretty simple ingredients. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make foam slime, then we're gonna add a thixotropic agent to it. Ooh, big word. Any of you that have worked in composites before are gonna know that you need a thixotropic agent to make things thick so that they don't slump down. To make sure that happens is, is that you can get some stuff called cabosil. The other name for this cabosil is fume silica. You can find that on Amazon. There will be a couple of links below for this stuff. Big caveat, when you're using this stuff, put a mask on. Have a respirator on or at the very least a mask. And the reason why is, does this stuff stink? Absolutely not. But it is so small that when you open the container, you're gonna see little fluffies kind of come up and fly away. Those things can get stuck in your lungs and it's not healthy, not healthy at all. A little bit your body's gonna be able to get rid of, a lot of it, and you might suffocate. Do not use this stuff without a mask. So back to the whole point is that we have made some foam slime and when you add this thixotropic agent to it, it thickens it up. Now it will hold a shape and stay in that shape for an extended period of time. That extended period of time that you need is 24 hours while it dries and it retains its shape. So you need to add about, in this case, I've seen about one cup to two cups of cabosil works really well in being able to hold everything together. If you haven't made glue slime before, or you don't have kids and you haven't had a need to, you really want to. This stuff's kind of fun. Basically you need PVA glue or white glue, clear glue, glitter glue, whatever glue, but generally it's known as the white glue, the craft glue that you buy at Staples or a lot of those other places. And then you add an activator and the activator can be borax, it can be contact lens solution, it can be eye drops. The big thing is, is to make sure it has boratic acid in it, or let me see, what do we have here? The brand of contacts lens solution must have bor boric acid and sodium borate in the ingredient. So look for borate, borax, uh, boric, anything, anything that's boring, is you gotta throw that in there, and that is what activates this. 
is this an exact science? There are some good recipes out there. This is the one that's worked well for me. Are you gonna be able to find a better one? Most likely. This here is only a starting step or a stepping stone for you to move forward and create your own version of this. This is nothing more than that. If you find an awesome recipe, I really want you to leave it down below so the rest of us can benefit from it. I'd really appreciate that. So what are we gonna need? What we're going to do is we're gonna get about two thirds of a cup of the white glue. In this case, I'm using FlexBond. The reason why I use FlexBond is, is unlike other PVAs, it dries flexible. Love flexible and that's kind of what you're going for. So that is one of the key tricks that I have. You're gonna need two to three cups of foaming shaving cream, the cheap stuff that your dad uses or grandpa uses or that you can buy at the dollar store. It is the best stuff that you can use. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in about a tablespoon and a half of contact lens solution or eye solution as long as you have the boric acid and the sodium borate and all that other kind of stuff in it. Last, we're gonna throw in some baking soda. Add about a teaspoon and a half. Throw that in there and start mixing together the glue and the shaving cream. The last thing that you need to do is add about two cups of the cabosil. Now remember my warning, wear a mask. This stuff is not healthy for you if you breathe it in. Otherwise, it's fine. Now, do you need to use cabosil? Not really, but it is the one thing that works the best for me. Things I have tried are cornstarch, but it reacts with the glue and it still kind of droops. I've tried using more baking soda. Again, that reacts with the glue, doesn't work very well. Baking powder reacts with the glue and doesn't work all that well. Wood flour, this is an interesting one. So basically the sawdust from a sand, sanding disc, um, if you can collect that and you go to a wood shop, they'll probably give you bags of the stuff, but you can buy stuff called wood flour. Wood flour works pretty well, but it makes for a little more fragile like clay. Are there other things that you can add? Absolutely. I want you guys to try adding any sort of powder that you want to this stuff. You can throw in some flour, maybe dirt, anything that you think will keep the foam from slumping or from deforming. And this is the foam clay that I ended up making. And basically, all this is is the foam slime that I just gave you the recipe for, plus the thixotropic agent, which happens to be cabosil. And then once you have some of this stuff, you can start making these guys. And this is using the cabosil. This is using cabosil as well. And this here is using wood flour. And I love the coloring the wood flour gives it when it dries out. But you can start using something to keep it from sagging. You just need to keep it from sagging for about 12 hours or so until you start getting that hard shell. And at that point, things start to harden up. You can see this hasn't fully dried. I haven't flipped it over. And this one again is the same thing. It was made last night. And all I've been doing is pressing it into this mold here throwing it into the, fr into the freezer for, I don't know, maybe two hours. And then you pop it out, let it thaw and dry. There are two major problems that you might encounter. One is, is that what you're mixing up is all lumpy and gross. Just add some more PVA glue and mix it in. And then if it's still lumpy, add a little more and eventually you're gonna find that it makes for a nice smooth doughy like lump. Second thing is, is that if it's runny and it just isn't clumping together, then add some more activator. Add some more contact lens solution or eye solution, or you can also add some extra baking powder. So is this better than foam clay? No, it's different than foam clay, but it can be used in the same areas as foam clay. Will you be able to use this for your cosplay? Absolutely, I do. Why can't you? I find that it's more durable doesn't sand as well but in the end it's something that I can make at home it's something that I have stuff for and it works for me so that's kind of where I'm going with this one will I buy foam clay absolutely do I buy foam clay you bet do I use foam clay yes I do if I'm in a pinch or I want something that's tough this is the stuff that I use 
One last thing is I find that this foam clay actually has a pretty short shelf life. It actually starts deflating and getting a lot thicker overnight. So if you're gonna make some stuff up, make it and then start using it right away. After you've used it, let it dry. You can keep some of the other stuff, but it doesn't have the same properties the next day. You definitely wanna use this stuff up as fast as you make it. Now go out, make some slime, throw in some thixotropic agents, Everybody likes a good agent. Has this been any help to you? I really hope so. Is this something that you're going to build and make? Please, please do. Leave a note below saying that you have and what your experiences are. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit.